Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Mari. I'm one of the librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine, and I'm here today with another picture book biography for Women's History Month. Today we're going to be learning about Elizabeth Cotton, a musician in this book, Libba, The Magnificent Musical Life of Elizabeth Cotton. This book is written by Laura Veers and illustrated by Tatiana Fala Lizaday, and it is published by Chronicle Kids. Let's dive right in. Libba. Libba Cotton heard music everywhere. She heard it in the river when she brought in water for her mother. She heard it in the axe when she chopped wood for kindling. She heard it in the freight trains moving down the tracks near her home. She heard it even when she wasn't allowed to. When her brother Claude was at work, Libba snuck into his room and borrowed his guitar. Dang, she whispered. Claude was right hand. Libba was not right-handed. She turned the guitar upside down and played it backwards. It's kind of like brushing your teeth with your foot or tying a shoe with one hand. Nobody else played that way, but it was the way that felt right to Libba. Like a train plays rhythm on the tracks, Libba made the notes go up and down. Like water bubbles in her brook, Libba sang a little song. Like a girl doing what she was born to do, Libba played the guitar upside down and backwards. One time she broke a string, another time she scratched the wood. Each time she put the guitar back. Dang, Claude said, she's done it again. But then Libba played him a song upside down and backwards. She played a funny way, but she sure was good. Soon Claude moved out to get a job, taking his guitar with him. But Libba never stopped in her tracks, she kept on rolling. Now what can a little girl like you do? I can sweep the floors, I can pick the vegetables, I can set the table. She earned 75 cents a month. Pretty soon, she had saved up $3.75, just enough for a Stella guitar. All day and night she played that guitar. Long after everyone had gone to sleep, her mother would shout, babe, I gotta go to work in the morning. How about a lullaby? So Libba put her mother to sleep, playing upside down and backwards. Libba played and played, and before you could say dang, she'd written her first song. She wasn't even 13 yet. Freight train, freight train, run so fast. Freight train, freight train, run so fast. Please don't tell what train I'm on, so they won't know what route I've gone. But the train, even trains get derailed and time swept Libba away and she stopped playing guitar. Now she was a tall and stately grandmother working in a department store. One day she found a little girl lost in the store. She returned the girl to her mother, Ruth Crawford Seeger, a composer in a famous musical family. Ruth could tell that Libba was kind and gentle and Libba felt the same way about Ruth. As the Seegers' new housekeeper, Libba moved like a gallon, taking care of the family. She made an eight-inch chocolate cake with six layers each. She loved the spirited ch children, but most of all, she loved how the mu home was filled with music. You could hear banjos in the bedroom, pianos in the parlor, and bass drums in the basement. The children awoke in the morning to bluesmen and drifters sleeping by a smoldering fire. The musicians had funny names like Lead Bentley, Woody Guthrie, and Muddy Waters. As Libba worked, she listened. One day, the kids on the porch and the bluesmen in the living room and the drummers down below heard a song. It was like a thousand songbirds singing, or a gentle spring rain, or a train rumbling down the tracks. It was Libba singing and picking that guitar like she'd never set it down. Dang, cried the kids. She can play, cried the bluesman. Soon the whole house was turned upside down and backwards. The children were clearing the dishes and washing up. The bluesmen were singing Libba's song, and Ruth was playing along. Everyone wanted to hear Libba's music. Sing Freight Train again, they shouted. The Seegers believed in Libba and helped spread the word about her music. But it was Libba's perseverance, her love of music, and her belief in herself that gave the world her voice. 
that will play grand cathedrals in London and velvet theaters in Rome. Thousands of people sang along when she played Freight Train, and now millions of people know her music. Libba turned her guitar upside down and backwards so she could play it her own way. She turned the music world upside down and backwards too. Libba caught and never stopped in her tracks. She kept rolling. Freight train, freight train, run so fast. Freight train, freight train, run so fast. Please don't tell what train I'm on so they won't know what route I've gone. Here's an author's note with more information about Elizabeth Cotton. And some work cited where the author tells what, um, where they got their information, as well as some videos that you can find, interviews, recordings, and, and more. And here's a picture of Elizabeth Cotton with her great-grandchildren playing her guitar upside down and backwards. The end. So if you enjoyed this story and you want to hear the song um, Freight Train, it will be linked in the cards and should pop up just about now. We also have plenty more picture book biographies about all kinds of women, so make sure you go and check those out, as well as some of our other programming. Once again, my name is Sarah Mark. I'm one of the librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.